How quickly can the Mariners close the gap between them and the Astros? And how good is Seattle's roster right now? We'll answer that and more on today's episode of Locked On Mariners. Colby, hit it. You are Locked On Mariners, your daily Seattle Mariners podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. It is Monday, December 12th, 2022. This is Tidy Gonzalez and Colby Patton for the Locked On Mariners podcast. Thank you so much for making us your first listen. Subscribe, like, and turn on alerts if you're watching on YouTube. Or subscribe and leave a five-star review on your preferred podcast platform if you like what you hear. And if you want to hear from us even more, please consider signing up for our Patreon. The link as well as our social accounts is in the description below. It is Mailbag Monday today. We'll be answering a few of your questions from YouTube. But before we hop into your questions, Colby, there is a pretty big trade that is happening right now that does somewhat impact the Mariners. The Oakland Athletics have agreed to trade catcher Sean Murphy to the Atlanta Braves, and it's actually a three-team deal with the Brewers involved. Uh, So can you tell us a little bit more about what the A's are getting and how this whole thing is uh, going right now, coming together right now? Yeah, this is a very slow, like reveal uh trade so far so pieces are trickling in a little bit um what we know is that the the braves have acquired sean murphy um the a's right now confirmed have acquired kyle muller left-handed pitcher uh esturi ruiz outfielder uh they've also acquired uh uh, manny pina uh catcher and uh freddie tarnock a a right-handed pitcher that's what we know so far um a few more players are probably going to trickle in here and there, but uh, it, it, it's it, it, it's a really slow reveal. So hopefully we'll know the entire trade by the end. Uh, Brewers are also uh, for there, and they're getting uh, William Contreras, Joel Piumps, and uh, Justin Yeager. So, uh, yeah, it's uh, it, it sounds like there's still a few more pieces uh, yet to be revealed, but uh, we'll yeah. let you know hopefully by the end of the show what the final deal looks like. Yeah, that feels like an underwhelming return for the A's so far for one of the better catchers mm-hmm. in baseball. So, yeah. A's somewhat famous for accepting True. bulk deals for star players. So we'll True. see what the rest of the deal looks like. All right. Let's hop into these questions. First up, Josh Gams. He wants to know, how worried are you that the Mariners will suffer a post-breakout year regression like the 2016 Astros and 2021 Padres? For me, the answer is not really. Um, because I think, for one, the, the breakout year for them was 2021. It wasn't this year. 2021, they win 90 games kind of out of nowhere, and they were able to successfully build upon that and finally end the drought in 2022. And... You know, really, like, think of it like this, right? 2014, they had the really fun run uh, where they almost made the playoffs. And then 2015, in the offseason, they add guys like Nelson Cruz. And you think, all right, this is it. And then they fell apart. So I think they've already shown that they're capable of avoiding what I think you're alluding to as a sophomore slump for the Mariners. And I think they've already proven that they can get past that. And that's... uh, and that they're going to be in a good spot. And when you look at their roster on paper, unless health, which certainly can happen, just completely you know wipes this whole roster out for a considerable amount of time, uh, I think they're one of the best rosters in baseball. We're going to talk about this a little bit more later on in the show as well. Uh, but I think they're in a really good spot to uh, compete for the postseason and a whole lot more. Colby? Yeah. Um, assuming average in, uh, injury luck, I think I think the floor is a little too high. Um, it's not that they have tremendous depth. Uh, they, they really don't, but, uh, the one through like 18 roster are so good. They can lose one or two for a few weeks here and there and, and be able to cover those holes. So, uh, it's, it's a pretty well put together roster. They still have work to do on it. It's not done. Um, but I, I just feel like it, again, unless, you know, catastrophic, you lose, you know, three all-stars, uh, for the year in, in May. 
Um, I feel like this team is going to be competing for, for a playoff spot. I, I, I don't know. Again, it's possible. They just don't play well. They don't get the same, you know, one run luck. It would be three years in a row, uh, to, to have, you know, kind of that one run luck, but, uh, you know, is it really luck at this point or is it a skill? So, uh, it, it's possible, you know, I'm not going to say it, it's not going to happen or it can happen. It certainly can, but I just feel like this team is a little too well put together and, and Jerry and, uh, Justin are, are too good at their jobs. That I, I would be pretty surprised if, if this team, we get to September and this team's just like, not really, not really, you know, in the mix. Yeah, for sure. Uh, next question comes from Russo's baseball cards. Uh, do you think the Mariners should pursue another high leverage arm in the bullpen? Why not go all in and make a splash for Brian Reynolds and David Bednar? <laughs> well, one, because I don't think they're going to be able to afford both Bednar and, and Reynolds. And we who don't knows think if they, they can, can afford Reynolds. Who, who, yeah. Who even knows if they can afford Reynolds, right? So yes. yeah, let alone Bednar as well. So, uh, probably not. Uh, on that specifically but i would like to see them add another like you know seventh inning guy so yeah you would consider that fairly high leverage um i would like to see them add a guy that's you know in the paul seawald range if possible um it just really depends on cost and it depends on you know what avenue they take to acquire that guy is that via free agency is that via uh, the trade market and also the thing you know when we always talk about this with jerry depoto and crew they might sign a guy on a minor league contract and he ends up being the seventh inning guy like two months down the road into the season so um you know they're just really good at developing arms of the bullpen so they're probably going to find that guy through uh unorthodox means <laughs> uh and uh but you know i would also be cool with them going out and spending a little bit of money in free agency to go get a guy maybe not in the like 10 million dollar range obviously but maybe you know six to eight million dollar range and uh, or you know go out and get someone via trade that's interesting colby yeah i think they have to add at least one more middle guy but they probably should look to add a, a more high leverage guy i think you need somebody who's at least as good as paul seawald added to this pen i just think that when they do it we're not going to recognize it we're not going to realize that that is their high leverage ad um right. because you know like ty said they're they're so good at, at just finding these guys and turning them into something they've never been before that, you know, it's probably going to be a, a non exciting name or we're probably just going to be like, yeah. And then he's going to be the guy with, you know, 30 holds and, and 12 saves at the end of the year, averaging, you know, a sub three ERA and, and punching 12 tickets per nine and eight or something like that. So we'll see what happens, but uh, I, I really don't think Jerry's going to go out and spend money, uh, significant money on the bullpen. I think he's more likely to address that via trade. Agreed. All right, we got more questions on the way, but uh, real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by BetOnline. BetOnline.net is your number one source for sports betting info, stats, news, and analysis. Get the latest odds and trends for every professional and amateur league out there, from football to basketball to soccer and esports. We've got it all at BetOnline.net. And if you love sports podcasts, you can find those at BetOnline as well. We're always the fastest and easiest way to get your betting fix. Head to the website today or use your mobile device to learn more. BetOnline is where the game starts you're listening to the lockdown mariners podcast thank you so much for making us your first listen it is mailbag monday let's get back into these questions starting with micah who wants to know if the mariners offseason moves ended today where do you see the team ending up in the standings by the all-star break so this is a very interesting question especially because the national league has dominated the off season so far they've especially dominated free agency and now they're kind of dominating the trade market here with uh you know the braves acquiring sean murphy um the american league as you noted colby just hasn't gotten a lot better and so i'm mostly working off of just how i felt coming out of the season and that was the mariners were the second best team in the american league coming out of this past season uh, behind the Astros and there's a pretty big gap between them and the Astros and we're going to be talking about that a little bit later on uh, but I mean you look at like the Yankees have re-signed Judge which is great but that doesn't make them better or worse than they were this past season you know maybe if they add Carlos Rodon I've maybe they they leap in front of the Mariners I think that gap is pretty close I think there's a bunch of teams just kind of bunched together and the Mariners are in that pack right now um but the Guardians they added Josh Bell who's a nice player but he's also you know a first base slash DH type and he was only worth two wins this past season that's only worth so much and then the Astros I mean 
you know, even them, they added Jose Abreu, which is a really great add for them, but also they lost the defending Cy Young winner and Justin Verlander. So they haven't gotten better. They've arguably gotten worse. So, you know, you just look around at what else the, the AL has done and the Mariners, while they have lost, you know, Mitch Hanniger and they have lost Eric Swanson, they've also added Teoscar Hernandez and they've also added Colton Wong. And so I s- still think they're the second best roster in the American League right now. And so I like if the season started today and the teams are just where they are right now, I think they're second in the AL West and probably w- one of the first two wild cards. Yeah, I think they uh, probably, I don't know, five, six games back of Houston, four or five, six, somewhere in that range. Uh, and I, I think they're, you know, it's tough to be safely in a wild card spot in July, but um, I think they'll be, you know, first or second and there'll be a little bit of a gap there. I just, I look at the American League and, you know, every team seemingly has gotten worse except for the Mariners. I mean, Cleveland got a little bit better. So you want to throw Cleveland in there. Uh, but like, have the angels gotten you know good enough to to challenge for a wild card spot i don't think so so yeah by uh, the way like like the rangers like they've made a big ad this off season mm-hmm. right like they've been pretty active they made you know they also got andrew heaney but they're still so far back that that doesn't even factor enough for me like yeah. they still have so much work to do angels as well it's like angels like they have two of the greatest players of all time <laughs> on their roster mm-hmm. at the same exact time i just don't buy them because they've given me no reason to so Right. I mean, Chicago hasn't gotten better. Minnesota hasn't gotten better. Tampa hasn't really done anything. I mean, Tampa added Eflin. And so if you want to say Tampa is a little better, fine, whatever. Sure. But, yeah. Um, Toronto hasn't done anything. So uh, Baltimore hasn't done anything. So, yeah, the American League, like you said, nobody's really done anything. So I expect it to look kind of similar to how it did this year. I think maybe they've shaved a game or two on, on Houston right now, but uh, we'll see how everything shakes out. And mm-hmm. obviously, this is not how teams are going to look, uh, right. you know. In, in during the all-star break so yeah you know we keep on saying like you know it's december 8th it's december 9th it's december 12th you know when we when we talk about like folks getting antsy about you know what the mariners have done have not done yet but you can say the same for pretty much every other team in the american league you can say the same for a team like the dodgers right the dodgers mm-hmm. haven't done anything this off season, which is wild cool. and they just lost trey turner like and they haven't done anything to replace them uh so you know there's a lot of you know good teams that are you know, you could even consider elite teams, you know, part of the part of Major League Baseball's elite that just haven't really done anything yet. That's going to change over the next couple of months. That is certainly going to change. And so, uh, but yeah, as things currently stand, I, I, I still think the Mariners are second best in the AL with the Guardians, the Rays, the Yankees, and I'll still throw the Blue Jays in there, even though that they've They've gotten considerably worse, in my opinion, by trading Tay Oscar and only landing Eric Swanson and Kevin Kiermaier up to this point. I would still throw them into that group as well. Uh, all right. Next question comes from Robert. Robert wants to know, how many more years do you think Julio Rodriguez will be a center fielder? Colby? As many as he wants. <laughs> um, I think, uh, Let's see. I would say probably three or four um, at the most. I don't think he's going to be bad out there, you know, when he's 25 years old. But there does come a point where the extra wear and tear on his body for having to play center field just isn't worth, um, you know, isn't worth the risk. And he's not so skilled in center field that you just like you can't possibly do better than him. So you stick with it like. Rodriguez is pretty good in center field. He's not great. He's not a gold glover, but he's pretty good. And there is value to having him out there because obviously, you know, you can now get a little bit less from your corner outfield spots because you have the big bat in center. But again, at some point there's going to come a time where the Mariners look at the, the, the benefit of having Julio in center field and they weigh it against the risk of having Julio in center field. And they decide to make that change. And I think it'll be fairly early in Julio's career. You just, you don't want to mess around with the bat, especially when you've already invested uh, you know, the Mariners are hoping four hundred and sixty-eight million dollars into a guy. Right. Uh, so, I think it's only going to be another three or four years, and and uh, I, I think the Mariners will make that decision to try and keep Julio as healthy and for as uh, he- as healthy as they can for as long as they can. 
yeah agreed you know with someone of his size and his mass like that is eventually going to lead to some wear and tear especially in center field uh and so you don't want to run the risk of him just messing up his legs his knees forever you know and that diminishing the value of his bat and his offensive production as well so uh there's probably going to come a time where a move to the corner or to one of the corner spots ends up happening and uh and that's fine, you know, but that gives you some time to uh, figure out your, you know, future center field situation as well. Uh, but I don't expect that that's going to happen for the next probably half decade. I say there, there's yeah. probably a half decade more of uh, center field time for Julio before that starts to become a conversation. But we'll see. We'll see what they uh, what they want to do, what the Mariners want to do and just how his body responds. Right. You know, he wasn't able to stay fully healthy this year. He had some back issues. That's a little concerning. So. But if he's able to stay healthy, you know, if he's able to play 150 plus games the next, you know, few years, then, you know, maybe they're they're fine with it. Just got to see, you know, it's different for everyone. Uh, But, you know, typically with someone of his build, that's not going to be a long term thing uh, to play center field, to play up the middle in general. All right. So we got a couple more questions to go, but real quick, a reminder, this episode of Locked On Mariners is brought to you by Simply Safe. At Locked On Mariners, we believe home should be where you and your family feel safest, especially over the holidays. This season, give yourself and your family the gift of peace and protection with the number one rated home security system, Simply Safe. And right now, Simply Safe is offering Locked On Mariners listeners 40% off a new security system, but don't put this off. Here's why I love it. In an emergency, 24/7 professional monitoring agents use Fast protect technology exclusively from Simply Safe to capture critical evidence and verify the threat is real so you can get higher priority police response. Simply Safe is whole home security with advanced sensors for every room, window, and door, HD security cameras for inside and out, smarter ways to detect motion that alert you only when a threat is real, and even hazard sensors that detect floods, fires, and other threats to your home. 24-7 24-7 professional monitoring service costs under $1 a day. That's less than half the price of traditional home security systems. And with the top-rated Simply Safe app, stay in complete control of your system, arm or disarm, unlock for a guess, access your cameras, or adjust system settings anytime, anywhere. Don't miss your chance to save big on my favorite security system. Get 40% off any new system at simplysafe.com slash MLB today. At simplysafe.com slash MLB. there's no safe like Simply Safe. And you're listening to the Locked On Mariners podcast. It is Mailbag Monday. Let's wrap things up with a couple more questions here, starting with Cody. Cody wants to know, is it reasonable to expect the Mariners can close the gap with the Astros with whatever uh, other moves may be coming to round out the roster? Or do you see them taking a few more off seasons to do that? I want to see them climb that mountain as soon as possible, but not at the cost of sustained success uh, versus a flash in the pan. So... Uh, that's a big question right now on, on Mariner's Twitter. That's a big debate right now is, you know, sustained success versus getting the immediate gratification. So how do you feel, Colby? Um, I think it's weird that a team that went through a 20-year playoff drought is, is so willing to set the team up for another one if it means they can win, you know, 95 games instead of 90 uh, this year. So that's weird to me uh, because I, I know the counter to that would be, well, then they could just spend more money and keep that window open longer. But again, we're not having this debate. We live in reality, not in the fantasy land that you, uh, you want us to live in. So to me, I don't think there was any combination of moves whatsoever. The Mariners could have uh, performed this off season. That would have closed the gap entirely between Houston and, and uh, in the Mariners. Houston's just better than you flat out. The Mariners are a really good team. Houston's an elite team. And they still are even without Verlander. Now they got worse by losing Verlander, but they're still going to be a a great team. They're still a 100 win team, at least on paper. I didn't see any path to the Mariners getting to a hundred. It, because it just, the math doesn't add up there. So I think you're closing the gap on Houston. I still think you're, you know, at least two transaction periods away. So that could be, you know, this winter and and the trade deadline, this could be, you know, the trade deadline and, and next winter. Um, before you can finally close that gap and realistically challenge them. But, you know, again, Houston's an older team, a little bit older. Uh, some guys are going to, they're going to have to start paying some guys sooner than you think. Um, you know, and, and at some point regression is going to kick in for Altuve and, and Bregman and, um, and all these guys, but Jordan's still very young. Hunter yeah. Brown is a great pitching prospect. Uh, Jeremy Pena is going to be a thorn in the side for a long time. So Frommer. Uh, yeah. Frommer Valdez, like, 
they're they're insanely good at what they do and so it's going to take a while to to close that gap you're closing it you closed it a little bit last year despite being you know 16 games worse than them um right. you're closing you so far you've closed it a little bit this winter we'll see how the rest of the winter goes i think you can continue to close that gap uh, at the uh, at the deadline and and so i i think i think you know 2024 is probably the earliest that you can realistically uh, overtake the Astros in this division, but uh, you are closing the gap. It just takes time because the gap was, it was massive, right? Right. You can't build the bridge overnight. Yeah. 16 gap, uh, 16 game gap is incredibly difficult to close in one off season's time. It's basically impossible. Like even if the Mariners, like added Aaron Judge and Trey Turner, right? Like that's still mm-hmm. like the gap isn't fully closed at that point. Or and like any and even if they in even if it was, right? Like that's so unrealistic. We're not even talking about that. So um yeah, the the thing that uh, the thing about the gap though is like it is already kind of closing just naturally despite or without you even making any moves this offseason it's you know getting a full season of Luis Castillo and and getting a full season of George Kirby and getting a full season of post breakout Cal Raleigh uh, and post breakout Andres Munoz that also factors into closing the gap so I don't think it's a 16 game difference anymore and then you add Teoscar Hernandez on top of that you add Colton Wong on top of that and of course you lose some ground as well with the loss of like Eric Swanson or, or Mitch Hanniger, but I think those are marginal marginal at best when you consider what they've added this offseason. So I think the gap is closing. It's just not closing as fast as maybe some want it to, but it will they will get there. And like Colby mentioned with the you know natural regressions of guys like Jose Altuve and Alex Bregman, that will also help as well. And who knows when that starts. Maybe that's this year, maybe that's next year. Uh, but that's going to happen at some point. And, uh, you know, but the thing that you always have to keep in mind here is the Astros, nothing is stopping the Astros from also getting better, from also adding. Like, you have to be able to stay in line with that and not necessarily respond, right? You know, Jerry Depoto talks about, like, we don't want to get too emotional and make, you know, deals out of emotion and because we need to respond or anything. But you need to be able to stay in line with whatever Houston is doing so you can stay as competitive as possible with them because they're going to get better. They're going to still make trades. They're still going to add significant talent. They're still going to go out in free agency and they're still going to be able to develop like they're still going to be able to do all those things and get better that way and so you know it's always going to be an uphill climb but i think the mariners are getting there and i think that they are just one or two really like nice moves from fully getting to that point but it might take you know another calendar year's worth of time to actually you know make that happen so um yeah you know it's a it's a it's a tricky situation but I, I feel good about where the Mariners are and what they've done thus far. And, you know, ho- again, you know, their off season is not done. It's far from done at this point. And so I, um, you know, I'm, I'm interested to see what else they do to round this thing off before they go to opening day, but they're in a much better situation position rather to compete with the Astros at opening day than they were last opening day. And I think that's what matters the most here. Yeah. So lastly, Alex Ledbetter, with a very fun question here. Which player on the Mariners do you think is the most similar to the other co-host and why? Colby, who, who, which Mariner am I most alike? Sean Figgins. <laughs> current Mariner. Let's go Eric current. Bedard. Let's oh, go okay. current Mariner. Um... Uh, that's a, that's a very interesting question. And one I don't have a good answer for, mm. um, let's see. Who do we think the dumbest guy on the team is? <laughs> <laughs> um, all right. Current Mariner, current Mariner. Uh, I have one. I have one. Are you going to say Matt Brash no. for like you? Um, no, 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 not for me. Not for me. They say you're both Canadian guys, you know? Like, yeah, but I'm a fake Canadian. I'm a permanent resident. I wasn't born here. I'm not a citizen. I mean, same thing. It's the same thing. Um, I have one for you. I'm gonna. I think I know what you're gonna say. But for you, I'll go with. I, I, I guess I'll go Matt Brash. You're both kind of small and Canadian. So. <laughs> 
I'm I don't small. know. I guess. <laughs> like you know, like relative, like like I know you're like you're like you're probably Matt Brash's size, right? Like six. I'm one? six one. Yeah, I'm six yeah. one. Brash yeah, yeah. is six one. How is that small? <laughs> well, I mean, like just rel- like. Oh, okay. Watch. Yeah, yeah. Tell me, Matt Brash doesn't look tiny when he's on the mound. Right, right, right. Look all at right. Julio Rodriguez run by Matt Brash, and you tell me he doesn't look small. I, I let, let me get to mine here. Okay. For you, Marco Gonzalez. Oh, boo! Think about this. You come through with some big time bulldog performances on the show, the rants. Sure. But but then there's the occasional blow up. There's there's the occasional blow up. See, I would argue that I'm much more talented than Marco is at what he's talented at. Like, like I'm a top 100 prospect at what I do. Marco's just we, kind we of just, a guy. We just got super canceled. <laughs> <laughs> no, I honestly, honestly, I thought you were gonna say Jared Kelnick because I'm kind of a jerk and not pleasant to be around sometimes. I mean that too. <laughs> Oh shoot! I was like, "Who's a who's a super serious guy?" I mean, I'm kind of surprised know. that you didn't pick Tom Murphy for me. I was thinking about Murphy a little bit, and I was just like, "That's that's no. who I thought when when I was like, who would?" Because I wasn't thinking like, "Who am I most like? Who do I think I'm most like? Who does Colby think I'm most yeah. like?" Yeah, see, that's why I thought you would say Kelnick for me. <laughs> um, yeah, Murphy kind of crossed my mind a little bit. Um, See, it, it's tough because like you're nobody's Julio. Like, let's just get that out of the way. There's only one. I mean, Julio. I mean, no, I you're mean, definitely not JP. Uh, I mean, a little, a little. Bit. You're you're not JP. You're not JP. <laughs> like maybe you're like Dylan Moore. Like you're not very good, but people think that you're good, mostly just to spite me. Like I think Dylan yeah, Moore's yeah, a better yeah. answer. That is true. Yeah. M- m- I think most people like their um, affinity for me is because it's just out of spite for you. Yeah, it's like it's not so much pro ties; it is anti Colby. Yeah, let's just which are the on only Colby. reason people root for Dylan Moore. So I'm gonna go with Dylan Moore for you. That's my right. official new answer. I'm Dylan Moore. You're Marco Demo. Gonzalez. Yeah. See, I I don't agree with my Marco call. I feel like I'm better. Than all right, me. all right. Who who do you think? Who do you think? Who do if I you had to I pick am? one for yeah, who do you if you had to pick one for yourself? <sighs> I'm a Eugenio, baby. <laughs> I hit bombs, but I strike out sometimes. But I got that great personality. You are, I'm you are the antithesis of good vibes. I'm only. affable, okay. <laughs> I'm extremely affable. Um, yeah, I don't know. That, that's a tough question. That's probably a better question for you guys in the comments. So you yeah, made it let, this far. let us uh, or maybe don't let us know. No, let us know. <laughs> let us know. We want to. We want to hear from algorithm you. baby. Yeah. W- which, oh, Ty, which we have a little bit of uh, oh, Chris Bassett news? has signed with the Blue Jays. Hmm. So uh, three years, sixty-three million dollars. <sighs> All right. So there we go. Hmm. Twenty-one per for Bassett. Yeah. Code I said got fifteen a, a year. Bit, yeah, I just I can't figure that one out. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Whatever. This I don't I don't understand this market at all. What is going up? Oh, and and we have the full trade. Uh, okay. For Jeff Passan, mm-hmm. Atlanta gets Sean Murphy mm-hmm. in the trade. Okay. Oakland gets Kyle uh, Kyle Muller, Esther Ruiz, Freddie Tarnock, Royber Salinas, and Manny Pena. Okay. Milwaukee gets Will- William Contreras, Justin Yeager, and Joel Piams. Mm. Oakland didn't get a lot here. Which is good. Yeah. Um, Big fan of that. That is a legitimately dumb trade by the Oakland A's. They didn't even get the second best player in the deal. Um, Big fan. Big fan of that. I honestly might argue they didn't get the third best player either. So... Cool. Mm. Well, See, guys, that's what cheapness looks like. Know the difference. Goodbye. That's going to do it for our show. Thank you so much for joining us here on the Lockdown Mariners podcast. For Colby Patnode, I'm Titan Gonzalez. Be sure to give us a follow on Twitter at LO underscore Mariners. You can follow me at Dane Gonzalez, the C-A-N-E-G-N-Z-L-Z. And Colby at CPAT11, that's C-P-A-T-1-1. You can also find all that stuff in the description of this episode. And thank you again for making us your first listen. Now, for your next listen, check out the Lockdown Sports Today podcast featuring the biggest stories of the day, plus instant reactions, big game recaps, and the take of the day. It's available on the Odyssey app, YouTube, and wherever you get your podcasts just like us. And with that, Have yourself a beautiful baseball day, and we'll see you tomorrow. Peace.